the Nintendo Switch 2 is finally in our hands. This console is not supposed to be a revolution from what they've been doing for the past 8 years. It's just an upgrade. The original had a few problems, this is all they want to fix them to remain relevant for the next who knows how many years. When it comes to stuff like performance, we'll only be able to give a proper judgement later down the line, but there is a thing I already know I don't like, and it's the UI. This was among the problems of the original, and the UI is unfortunately one of the things they barely changed. Today I'll show you my attempt at a redesign. Some of the stuff I did probably goes a bit beyond the definition, since I haven't simply fixed some UX stuff, I've added some new features as well, but they are all in service of the problems and missed opportunities I found. Let me begin with something I'm sure you've already heard or maybe even thought yourself how incredibly generic this UI is. Some may think that it's not a big deal, and I can see why. There are situations where it's less important. This is not one of them in my opinion. As a designer I'm judging this situation based on the brief. Essentially, the list of objectives they want to achieve with this product. Every function of the company should do the best they can to fulfill the brief. Design is no exception. Of course, they haven't published the brief anywhere, but I think we can at least infer elements of it by looking at what they said to the public and to investors. Nintendo said multiple times that they want people to see the Switch as a personal device. In a household where multiple people want to play the Switch, they'd prefer if they all bought an individual system instead of sharing the same one. I don't think I have to explain to you why they'd want that. They do profit from the hardware, after all. That's not always a guarantee with consoles, but in Nintendo's case it is. But if that is the mission, to make people feel like the Switch is their own personal console, is the current Switch 2 software experience doing the best it can to ensure this happens, frankly no. As I said, many have described this UI as generic, but in my opinion a better word is impersonal. Every choice they made ensures that it can't be customized in the slightest. And I'm not even just talking about the aesthetics, though I will start by addressing that. The most effective way to make a console feel like it's yours is with visual customization, so themes. But I always had a problem with how themes usually work on consoles. When you use a theme you're using a complete package, which can have art and music from a specific game or a game series or whatever. But it's just that. It's almost never your theme in any meaningful way, because you can only choose a theme from a selection made by someone else. For this concept they structure themes in a modular fashion. You have three main elements, a background image, music, and then a bunch of stickers you can place wherever. All these elements are derived from Nintendo or maybe even the third party's gigantic repertoires, and they can be mixed and matched however you want. And the way you get them, of course, they can't really be free, but they can't cost like a whole theme either. The production value is much smaller after all. If only we had some kind of alternative currency optimized for such ephemeral things that maybe already exists on the system, but it's criminally underused. Oh wait! It's platinum points. You see, in design a good idea is usually something that fixes multiple problems at the same time. This one not only deals with customization, but it also gives a bigger purpose to platinum points. The next issue is a technical one. The Switch, for some reason, doesn't really distinguish between what is a concern of an individual user with an individual account and what is a concern of the entire console. The way it currently works is that there is one home screen that is shared between all the users of the console, which leads to a bunch of weird situations. For example, some apps require Nintendo Switch Online to be played. If you try to access one of them with a user that doesn't have it, it will only block you afterwards. What is the point? Why even show it? It's also not great for customization because, I mean, what is custom if everyone has the same home screen? And it's a bit of a waste of time because whenever you want to open a game you have to tell the console again and again that it's you. In my concept, every user gets a private home screen with their own private theme and private and custom app disposition, which is not just based on which game was played last. They can be repositioned freely, and they are in a grid for reasons you will soon understand. I also added folders because, yeah, of course, why not? And I also redesigned um, this thing here. I'd call it dock because it's similar in concept to this or this, but the dock already means something. You know what? Who cares? I also redesigned the dock. The Switch UI dock is basically the place where they put anything that is not a game. That's also its main problem. On the first version of this OS it was fine, the features were so few that it made sense to have them all there, but we went from 6 icons to this. 
I don't think this is sustainable. It doesn't scale and it has no hierarchy whatsoever. In my concept, as you might have guessed, the solution involves separating the concerns here too. The dock only contains stuff related to the console as a whole now. Everything involving the user was instead moved to a menu you access from the profile picture icon. The slightly more difficult part was dealing with the controllers, because in the current version of the OS there is a bit of a redundancy. You have this visual element in one of the corners of the screen that is simply a visual element. It only tells you how many controllers are connected. It doesn't really allow you to do anything. If you want to change the configuration, so if you want to pair or unpair controllers, you have a separate panel. In my concept I merged the two things. You simply have this component in the bottom left corner of the screen and that is the place where you also can pair and unpair them from the console. Much simpler I think. Moving on, there is another small inconvenience that I think should be mitigated. There is a type of pattern used by many games including from Nintendo of course, which deserves more attention considering how common it is. I'm talking about timed events, something you can find in many online games and not even that's a requirement sometimes. Things like map rotations or limited items, what they have in common is that they happen whether you're playing or not usually on a predetermined day. Usually they tell you about this stuff on social media or on proprietary apps. Everywhere but the console. In my humble opinion, this should change, and my solution to this would be widgets, which work exactly how you would imagine. Every game can offer multiple widgets, and they all keep track of something specific, so you can choose which ones to have depending on what you care about. They take more space than a regular icon because of course they need to show more stuff, but they can be used to launch whatever game they are from to avoid redundancy. You don't need to have both the icon and the widget. Widgets are useful for the kinds of information you can acquire serendipitously. They give you context to help you make a decision, see at a glance if something interesting is happening. But I don't think it's the only type of information the console should proactively give to the user. You know, I always found weird how they left this tiny sliver of display exposed when in dot mode, both for the first switch and now the second, but they never did anything with it. I could absolutely see the point of things like notifications or even something akin to iOS's live activities, which follow an event and update as new things happen. It could be used to remind you of an in-game event, or maybe show the progress of a download while you do something else without leaving the console necessarily occupying the main screen, you know? Or maybe a countdown to a midnight launch or a Nintendo Direct. Sure, stuff like this mostly makes sense if you keep your console on the desk, and of course it needs to be optional, but why not have this option. So, most of what I did for this redesign involves some form of personalization, right? If you paid attention, you'll remember that it's all a consequence of the brief I use as reference. But the cool thing is that this idea is spreading kind of everywhere for all sorts of reasons. Personalization is a trend that is interesting the broader tech sphere. In this other video, I explain the different forms it can take and why all of this is happening. It's a much bigger thing. Check it out if you want. Ciao!